Okay, my name is Kai Jin. So for those who are joining for the first time, um, I'm a second year student doing cons and finance and I've actually been doing this out of passion to share a little bit more regarding my financial journey as well as, you know, to, to, to share, share this, this, I would say this knowledge with others as well to ho hopefully help them kickstart their journey in a, in a sense. So I've been investing for the past five years at, through fundamental analysis, uh, analysis. So my sharing will orientate around fundamental investing itself. A little disclaimer is I'm not a financial advisor. So whatever is going to be shared today, you know, um, do take it as an education or entertainment purposes only. If you like to, you know, kickstart your journey, do seek uh, guidance from your respective financial consultant or uh, do your own research as well before, you know, dive into uh, whatever actions you intend to do so. So a little summary with, with regards to what's happened in the past, the past two months itself is, as well as what's going on for this month, is that for the month of April itself, I actually uh, touched on the basics of financial literacy, uh, the, the, the little bits, tidbits about, about uh, investing itself, the basics of investing. As for the last month itself, for the month of May, I'm actually uh, touching into the process of investing, like a mindset, how do you get towards your goal, your portfolio and stuff like that. As for this month, is to understand investing which is why, how do we utilize our first $1,000 at the same time, um, um, equities and bond investing, understanding them for the subsequent weeks as well as I think the final week I'll be revealing on my own portfolio itself. So yeah, do stay tuned. Um, so for today itself, I will touch about the minimum sum, you know, to actually to begin with and what I really think is the appropriate value of the optimal value. So I hope at the end of the day, you know, there would be some form of understanding on where you can kickstart or to understand because I do get a lot of questions on how do I start or where do I look into uh, so and so forth. So the quote of the day is patient is key. Where do I get this is, you know, to reach to the top, success and everything, you have to, you know, take your first step forward. So success, success takes time, you know, and having this statement itself, patient is key. So how, how I normally run my webinar is uh, I do touch a little bit of current affairs before I actually jump on to the main topic itself. So what's going on recently is uh, Hong Kong and China itself, the tension regarding their security uh, law imposed, which you know sparked uh, ongoing protests as well as civil unrest amongst the Hong Kong people itself. Uh, as shared last week itself, this will actually indirectly affect Singapore one way or another and we are able to see more investors you know, allocating their funds elsewhere, including Singapore. And most notably, you know, we can see uh, purchasing of real estates uh, into Sentosa as well. I mean, that's one of the most prominent uh, um, highlights. So US and China tension and, uh, trade tension itself is not easing and the protest is going on um, with, uh, and given the, the additional protest is going on within the United States, uh, the country has actually become more chaotic, you know, filled with more uncertainty. Uh, and in my opinion as an investor, uh, that is something that you will want to take into consideration if you want to look into the overseas market. So back to back, back at home, um, back in Singapore, actually we're entering into phase one actually starting from today, if my memory serves me right. So most business are able to, you know, resume, which hopefully, you know, in the future or in the near term, spur the economy, you know. Unfortunately, you know, if you actually travel out to go and see shopping centers and everything, you will actually see smaller retail stores closing down and having the for lease or for rent sign up. So this could actually impact us in near term. Additionally, you know, we are actually starting to see a bigger, uh, starting to see from bigger corporations that are actually letting go of people. And I do feel that uh, this is just the start. Yes, the government actually are promising to, to create more new jobs for individual. However, um, given said so, my, my take as an investor point of view is I would like to uh, wait till the second quarter, or at least the first half of 2020 before certain decisions are being uh, finalized. So kickstarting today, uh, kick today, the topic itself is time is money, but money isn't time and that is something that we have to constantly bear that in mind itself. So now we will talk about, you know, how you can first utilize your first $1,000. My own opinion and suggestion is that to put these first $1,000 into a high savings account. Reason saying so is because $1,000 is too little for you to remain flexible when investing, when making investing decisions. So when I refer to high savings account, you can look into standard chart. Yes, I know they're going to drop from 2% to 1% in the upcoming month, uh, in the first, starting 1st of July. I think there is another uh, savings account by an insurance broker, I think it's under Sing Life, uh, which offers 2.5%. I'm not sure whether that 2.5% will stay still for the next couple of months uh, or throughout, but uh, you can look into that as well. If you've got any question, you can get to it at the end. So yeah. So the reason why I say so, uh, say $1,000 is too little because it 
I would say it hinders to a certain degree in terms of your, your investing decision making. So within Singapore itself, unlike US, one lot is equivalent to 100 shares. So let's say, for example, you would like to buy into a company, let's say DBS, which is approximately $20, for example. You have to purchase 100 shares of it, which is which is sum up to a total of $2,000. So um, that is the, 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 the comparison and the, the things that you have to factor in as well. So on top of which, we have to also consider uh, brokerage fees, which will eat into your initial profits on your first year period. So like, like I mentioned, so whatever stocks that we got to uh, purchase and everything, uh, we have to multiply it by 100. Lah. So in my opinion, I would say the, the good start would be around $3,000 to begin with. So um, on top of which, you know, before you begin investing itself, you know, try your best to earn and save more at this current period. Uh, if you are working a full time, you know, and you feel that you're being overqualified or underpaid, you know, do, do ask for a pay raise. This kind of thing. I know it's going to be a little bit hard, uh, given this current uh, uh, situation, this pandemic and uh, uh, economic crunch. But never ask, never know. You know. So I don't believe in the and as well as like in the in the open the all those uh, marketing campaign. I don't believe in the one thousand to one million dollar within like one month period or so. Uh, it's marketing. It's not investing. Of course, I'm not saying that you know you can't invest with one thousand dollars. But for those who are interested, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you do can indicate uh, uh, at the end, then we can do an open discussion on it. Now, I'll share with you regards to where you can allocate your $1,000. So, that, there are you know, many other tools such as robo uh, investment, such as you know, DG portfolio from DBS, as well as Stash Away. Investing itself, uh, the outlook and how we should view it is that um, we have to understand that it's similar to owning a business and not just a hobby for you. Uh, someone once said this lah, treat your business like a business and it will pay you like a business. If you treat it like a hobby, it will cost you like a hobby, similarly to investing itself. Um, lastly itself is investing is a process similar to you know, how you invest your time into uh, training for sports that, that you really love or like for your studies to get good grades um, in order to achieve greater results. Huh? So it's not a get rich quick scheme. Um, it's oftentimes miss market out there. So yeah, you know, if it's, you know, um, this, this, this entire journey actually takes time to accumulate uh, your, your knowledge and stuff. And I know that it might seem very overwhelming in the beginning. Um, but why, uh, but what I, I have actually thought of was actually to create a Telegram group, which I'll share at the end, to actually, you know, aid in terms of discussion, your decision making and stuff like that. So personally, my current portfolio is only generating me about a humble 5 to 6% dividend on a, a, on a per annum itself. And I'm actually striving to achieve a 7% with uh, dividend return annually. La. So just a little bit background about myself. So next, moving forward, you know, we got to ask yourself this particular question is, um, you need to know that whatever that you, you invest into is um, a form of investment whereby the, the funds that you put into is funds that you are able to lose, you know. Um, you have to also know that the money that, that whereby you allocate into investment, is it your entire savings? Uh, or do you have actually other funds set aside uh, in case of rainy day? So the other question is your, your financial outlook. Are you a working adult, working student, or are you just a student itself? So, you know, um, are you able to survive if, let's say, suddenly at this point of time, you got no income for the next 12 months? Are you able to, uh, to last through this entire 12 months itself? At the same time, be it whether you're a student or a working adult, you do have commitments and responsibilities. You need to know that, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you are, but you need to know if, let's say, taking into account if you are paying for your school fees, your bills, la, your loans, la, your insurance premiums, la, your membership like for your Netflix, la, for your uh, Spotify, this kind of thing. So all these things into, into consideration as well when you want to uh, plan out your financial uh, 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 goals and your portfolio. So um, the fourth one would be understanding your risk appetite itself. So how much can you stomach in? For example, if let's say, uh, when you were back in sometime in January, February, whereby you put the money to market with, uh, I won't say the all-time high, but it's like, it's one of the highest period, then whereby it dipped to a 37, there's a 37 drop. And how do you actually, uh, 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 how do you feel if let's say there's a 37 drop in your portfolio? Are you able to sleep tonight or, or will you panic and try to sell everything and resulting with an uh, incurred loss? Uh? So that's something you have to ask yourself. You know, there's a lot of misconception uh, okay, at least to my own opinion, there's, I don't think that high risk equals to high reward. There is a lot of way to look at it. So one example I like to tell my friends, if, if you are able, if you've got the ability to swim, jumping into the water is not risky at all because you do, uh, you do are able to you know, stay afloat. 
However, there's this unsystematic ways whereby you might get a late cramp, you know, which result having the lifeguard to come and save you. Uh, similarly to investing, if you are well well versed with the knowledge and everything on, on what's going on around within the company, what outside the company, within the economy as well as outside the economy and on macro scale like globally, uh, your investment decision tends to be a bit more, I would say, more secure in the sense that you you do you are more reassured despite you know what people say as a higher risk. So you're actually studying the risk and taking calculated risk. So last but not least, uh, this is very important, never borrow uh, to invest. Uh, this is the one, I would say, the dumbest strategy that's out there. People always say leverage, 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 right? Um, but yeah, that, that is something that, uh, that, that I would never uh, uh, advise people to do so. Okay, moving on, I'll be talking about the strategies that's out there. Uh, I'll split it into two where there's an investment approach plus the portfolio approach. So how we can look at it is, um, I'll talk about the investment approach first, then I'll follow by the portfolio. So investment uh, approach itself, we can look uh, for the income and dividend uh, investing itself is actually diversifying your portfolio, you know, uh, into various, I would say, various companies itself, excuse me, to generate a passive income to live on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, such as like a secondary source of income. Uh, growth investing is whereby investor, they tend to focus on increasing the, their own portfolio capital through investing into a smaller company whereby uh, the company is able to generate earnings uh, above average. For example, a billion dollar company, right? Um, it's hard for them to generate another billion dollar, but maybe a uh, one million dollar company is able to generate another million, which is a hundred percent return, for example. So uh, that's enough for, for thoughts. Lah. Value investing itself uh, tends to focus on the quality of the company itself through fundamental analysis, uh, which, uh, which is what I have been doing in the past. Um, which, you know, individual, you know, that assumes that, that this particular company is undervalued given after their research uh, through strong fundamental analysis. Lah. So deep value investing is similar to value, but they follow strictly in terms of they only purchase stocks that is below, uh, 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 below fair value. So that's something to consider as well, uh, depending on which you prefer more. Uh, value investing tends to be a bit more flexible, but deep value do help you in a sense, to incur lesser loss, your I would say your loss margin will be your string if you are you are a deep value investor. Factor investing itself is actually looking into which is what I'm trying, which is what I'm learning now. It's actually looking into more details such as you know the value of the company, the size, momentum, quality, as well as the yield plus their growth outlook and the liquidity standpoint. Uh, a little bit slightly more uh, work required compared to the four uh, investor investment approach that I mentioned earlier. So this is something that I'm trying to learn along the way. Um, yeah. Portfolio approach itself, uh, I also list out five. Most commonly known is dollar cost averaging, DCA. I think this is what uh, most of the people are actually well familiarized with. Uh, of it, I would say risk-wise, there isn't much cost. You are actually diversifying your risk across time, across the period of time. So yeah. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the difference between dollar cost and value average. The difference is that dollar cost average is irregardless of time, period, price, or anything. You will put in a substantial amount of money or you will purchase a fixed amount of stocks at every, at every periodic, uh, whichever you set, monthly, quarterly, biannually, or, or yearly basis. Value averaging in is more of understanding the company. And if let's say this particular stock, you feel that it's a little bit overpriced selling at a premium, you tend to want to purchase lesser amount but where if let's say this stock, same stock, and if let's say the price drop below is book value or fair value, you tend to want to purchase more. Then that's called value averaging in. Lump sum is a uh, self-explanatory. You just put in the money, uh, one lump sum into a company that you believe they will do well in the long term. Barbell approach, I would say this is more interesting because it helped investor diversify into 50% for, I would say, maybe into the stocks and another 50% into the bonds. So it, it more of like balance out each other in terms of a uh, uh, different kind of assets. All weather portfolio is by Ray Diaolio. I'm not sure if I pronounce, sorry if I pronounce his name wrongly, but yeah, he, he do advocate in terms of diversifying into various asset class such as like, you know, like gold, uh, into mutual funds, into respective stocks, into bonds, and holding certain amount of cash as well within your portfolio. So it's a more diversified. However, um, this all weather portfolio approach is more, I would say, attuned for fund managers instead of retail investors like us, the individual investors. But of course, you still can implement it. I'm not saying you can't. Yeah. So a lot of people, aside from how, you know, uh, the strategies and stuff like that, they also do ask, you know, where do you kickstart? Where do you conduct your research? Uh, what are the platforms, you know, you can use to, to actually find out the information that you want? So uh, I've actually listed out the news platform 
uh, whereby you know you can obtain news around the world as well as local or macro whatsoever. Uh, what are the what are people's opinion, uh, journalists and everything like their opinion on their outlook of what's going on around the world. So like Bloomberg like Yahoo Finance lah, yeah. So the least so. So if you want, you all can screenshot this. Uh, if it helps you, uh, followed by brokerage. Brokerage is interesting because uh, they do have actual research analysts or investor there that actually generate reports to show you what's their finding of the particular business as well as uh, the future outlook in terms of the economical aspect plus the global aspect. Yeah, so as well as their comparison between their peers and stuff like that. So the brokerage is an interesting platform you can look into. I personally use Philips because, uh, uh, yeah, I prefer, I, 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 like their, I like their research report and stuff like that. If, if you got time at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example. Other platforms such as like investing note like SG, SG, SG investors.io, they, they allow platforms for other retail investors like, like myself and whoever is investing like you guys uh, to actually have a forum whereby you all can do open discussion regarding the investing decisions that you guys are making. Bloggers itself, there is many, many out there, but I don't have space because yeah, I only got one slide to fill it in. So um, these are the four main bloggers that I actually read on and I really like the work that they have been putting into and I like their, their ideology regarding to investment. Uh, that's why I'm following so. Yeah. Um, summary would be, you know, uh, to conclude this entire thing is earn more rather than save more. Your, for example, your income is here, your spending is here, your profit, your savings margin is here. So how, what you want to do is, you only can, if you want to save all, you only can save here, but then they, they want you to eat, to tao, eh? you just eat grass for the entire month. So what you want to do is you want to increase your, 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 your income to here, therefore, but then at the same time, remain the same spending habit, therefore you can increase your savings, uh, I would say, your savings margin. Like I mentioned, uh, investing itself is not a get rich quick scheme. Uh, yeah, so, it takes time, it takes progress. Um, I'm not rich yet, so I'm a life example. Yeah. So there is no shortcut, you know, be disciplined, be diligent, do your homework, uh, uh, stay consistent. If you, let's say you got any question or whatsoever, like you don't understand, yeah, find an investing buddy, you know, to talk about things or find a community, uh, yeah, to, to exchange knowledge, to find out if the investing decision or the idea that you have yourself, is it wise to proceed on or not? Yeah. So, Lastly is invest with logic instead of emotion. You don't have to be afraid or fear of missing out. Like you see all the stock price start shooting up like at this point of time, even though the economy is very bad. Uh, don't need to be afraid. Think logically. Like really, why is the market going up? You have to understand the other contributing factors uh, that is spurring this thing. And what will the most likely outcome be? Or what are the indicators that you're looking into? So all this kind of thing, you know, uh, uh, plays, a, plays a part in terms of decision making. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank everyone for their time for joining. I actually come to the end of uh, the sharing. If let's say you've got any questions, feel free to you know, put in a Q&A. We can do an open discussion. Everyone can stay tuned and listen. Um, the YouTube channel, I actually start uploading the earlier webinars that I have actually done. Uh, so feel free to you know, subscribe, like, share with your friends if this helps them. Uh, Instagram, where I upload the periodic and source information. Um, if you all got Telegram you know, uh, and you would like to join a group, I do post news on, a, on almost a daily basis uh, on what's going on around the world plus what's going on in Singapore. So yeah, you can just join. I, I, I open up the channel already. So yes, I've come to the end. And just to share a bit more, giving your insight of why I feel, uh, okay, not why I feel, like, I'll just show you all what I have actually done with regards. Okay, so if y'all can see, this why, uh, some of y'all might have seen this before, those who have in the past. Uh, this is what I've actually done to, with regards to monitoring my own uh, expenses plus my investment stuff. So yeah, uh, as we can see, this is uh, the daily spend spending by on a month-to-month -month basis. So this is, as we can see, because of circuit breaker, I'm, like, I'm not actually spending a lot. Yeah, then followed by this. Uh, this month of June, then I do indicate my savings, my income, uh, plus my dividends received for the particular month, as well as the invested sum and my portfolio value. Yeah, then plus my network. So this is the graph on showing like, at least I can visually see whether um, to some extent what's going on with my money. Yeah, is my money working hard enough for me or not? Yes, okay. I will touch a bit more regards to that uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the month. Yeah, so uh, that's more like a sneak peek preview, you know? That's what all the movie does, right? Uh, what are your thoughts about? Okay, I'll, I'll be doing a training now. So what are your thoughts about putting into 
putting into a fixed deposit. Okay, putting the fixed deposit, it's I won't say it's the best. Um, however, if let's say you are a beginner and you have no idea what's going on, putting a fixed deposit is fine because it's the interest rate still beats um, the the bank savings interest rate because of the given cyber rate, which is the uh, Singapore, which is a reflection of Singapore interest rate. That Emmanuel. So I answer your question. Thoughts on stash away. Stash away is a robo investment. You can do it on. Uh, you can put any. There's no minimum sum, if I remember correctly. Um, the management fee is 0.8 percent at this current per annum at this point of time. Uh, yeah. Then there's a lot of risk. They they got their own account whereby you can set your own risk appetite. Then after that, they will just invest accordingly, like percentage into equities and bonds. Yeah, that's my understanding of stash away. Uh, however, I don't like robo investment. Okay, I'm not saying I don't like. Uh, it's it's a good platform, but uh, I will tend to avoid because there is this thing called the underlying fees. Uh. so on top of this zero point eight percent management fee, right? Whatever profits that you make from the investment itself, a uh, portion of it will still have to pay to the individual funds that they invest into into the management fee, uh. So for example, you robo investment, right? Uh, they invest into fund A, fund B, fund C. Fund A, Fund B, Fund C all had their own management fee. So on top of the 0.8%, you're paying into these three other funds management fee. But you still do get the earnings. Lah. It is not entirely bad thing. Yeah. Um, SG government pumped in about total 100 billion stimulus into the SG economy. This will be because of the general stock price. Cost stock price is considered as solid looking. Um, okay. Putting 100 billion dollar into the economy. Uh, doesn't exactly reflect what's the market outlook. Economy doesn't reflect. Uh, market is part of the economy. That's something we gotta understand. So, for example, uh, how should I put this? Okay, like I think I share with you people in the past is Ford and Netflix comparison. So Ford is a twenty billion dollar market market cap company, whereas for Netflix is a two hundred billion dollar market cap company. Correct. However. Ford hired over 100,000 individuals to work. So in labor force, they hire over 100,000 lab 100, labor force. Whereas for Netflix, they only hire about I think 9K or so. So let's say for example, within the market, we took a market first, we the economy. So within the market, if let's say Netflix drops 10% in terms of um, their market cap, that is, that is the equivalent of the valuation of Ford. Yeah, so if let's say Ford were to drop a 10%, right, it's not going to affect the market much. But a drop in 10% for Netflix is going to affect a market. It's going to pinch the market a little bit. Then, uh, then uh, okay, pain a bit. But as for if let's say Ford were to retrench every single person, right, this 100,000 individual, right, is going to be jobless. And this is going to cause a huge loss within the economy. So that is the huge difference between market and economy. So given this $100 billion stimulus, right, answering back to your question, um, I wouldn't say there will be a jump in stock price. Yes, in the initial, there might be a surge cost. People might think, okay, actually there's money in the economy circulating. So, you know, uh, uh, I might be able to buy into, like, I feel a little bit rich, but uh, looking long term, if let's say they got debt to pay off and stuff like that, we have to consider that factor as well. So that is my consideration. I, I, I won't say that it will immediately jump. Yeah. So I hope I answer your question. Is there a template for the Excel sheet or was it self-made? Uh, it was self-made. I, I plan to upload it over a platform uh, in the near future when uh, uh, I'm trying to work on a blog so that y'all can download all the materials and stuff that I actually have. So I'm, I'm still thinking on how do I do it. Uh, when do you sell stock takes profit? Is there a percentage gain? Okay, so for myself, I'm a fundamental. Funda I, tr I follow through fundamental like how Warren Buffett does. Is Whenever I do an investment, I don't have the mindset of selling. The only reason why I will sell a particular business or a particular company is because their management structure change. So their goal, uh, their goal with an investor goal is their, their, their goal are misaligned. And that's only the only reason. Or maybe uh, for some reason, they are not on a competitive edge. They, they lost the economic mode or the competitive mode. And that's one way whereby uh, I will actually sell that particular business. If not, I will tend to hold until, yeah, until I die and pass on to my, if I got children, I'll pass on to my children. Yes. I hope I answer your questions. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? If not, um,
I think now we have a bit more time, so I think I'll talk a bit more uh, equals to the jump in stock price. Uh, yeah, it will jump in the initial part because uh, investors do feel confident that there is money within the market to a certain extent. But if let's say the next, like I mentioned, like, I will wait until quarter two or the first half before I make my next decision. Uh, so maybe when those numbers do come out, like the GDP for the first half of 2020 will come out, um, it, it might go both ways. Like. If it's a bad number, uh, people might lose confidence. If it's a good number, uh, people might actually start, you know, uh, feeling a bit more confident in terms of investing into the market itself. Uh, risk investing, reinvesting is, risk investing is, I would say, a, a very tricky, tricky security that stock that you have to look into. Uh, reason being because real estate itself, right? We have to understand like the master lease, la, their gearing ratios. La. I think currently, I think it's a 50% now because of the current is issue. Uh, MAS actually raised to 50%. Is it MAS? Yeah. Then, um, what's that thing called? We have to understand within, uh, within their, 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 their estates itself, like how are they performing? What's the occupancy rate, occupancy rate plus their, contract their will, their weighted average lease expiration. So there's a lot of thing to consider if you want to look into REITs. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about REITs during uh, equity investing itself. I think, it, I believe it's the third week of this month. Stay tuned. I'll cover a little bit more uh, about REITs as well, as far as understanding them. Forecast seven, around there. Yeah. What are, are your views on the data center REITs? Capel DC REITs. Yeah, I'm looking at Capel DC. I actually share with regards to Capel DC on my very first webinar. The stock price went up and it's very unattractive now because it's too bloody expensive. That's my own opinion. Yes, digital does play a very important, uh, I feel digital does play a very important role uh, in terms of, you know, uh, like what the government say by 2022 or 2023, uh, they, they want to implement 5G to almost I think 30% of the entire Singapore. Um, so we can definitely look into data center as well. And most of the data center are actually striving. Yeah, and given their portfolio is pretty diversified across the world, yeah, I'm rooting for Capital DC, but the price is a little bit too high. It's a bit too high for me to purchase at this point of time. Therefore, uh, I, I try to avoid it. How did I invest? I didn't invest my first thousand. I saved my first $3,000 and I put it into OCBC bank. I, I said I invest into OCBC company because out of the three banks, um, OCBC was the cheapest at the point of time when I purchased it. So that is what I do in my first $3,000. The reason why I say $1,000 is a bit too low is because we have to take into consideration of brokerage fee. For example, if let's say we use the lowest one, which is EBS Vickers, trading a brokerage fee of $10. Um, yeah, brokerage fee of $10. Uh, and, and we have to take the consideration of like the clearing fees, la, the GST. La, the, yeah, there, there's I think three other fees. I cannot exactly remember offhand. But yeah, then it was amount to about $11 or so. So I would... As an investor, I tend to want to keep this brokerage fee to as low as 1% of my invested sum. So in order to keep it at 1%, means I must invest at least $1,100 to keep it at, keep it, uh, to make sure that you keep it at 1%, yeah. So I tend to want to invest more. At the same time, investing $1,000, uh, there isn't much opportunity or option that, that there isn't much flexibility that you can do in terms of considering which stocks to purchase. Because not all stocks is that is after buying 100 shares of it fits into your $1,000 budget. Yeah. So that's the reason why I, I feel that it's an individual. What you all can look into, you know, is to look into uh, um, investing into, I mean, putting into a high savings account. So what I can do is I'll share with you guys. So standard chart is one of the very good, it's a savings account, which means that uh, there's no like there's no liability in terms of if you want to withdraw your money or whatever, you do enjoy the 1% throughout the entire year. The, the, the other one, it's this actually. Sing Life, you all can look into it. It's 2.5% per annum return for um, up for your first $10,000. But you need to understand Sing Life is a brokerage, it's a, insur it's a insurance broker, yeah. So this is the savings plans that they have. Uh, Y'all can look into it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not advertising for them. Uh. I, this whole entire thing is not sponsored. I'm just sharing. Hopefully can, you know, help you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
if not, this, uh, this entire sharing will be done on a weekly basis. So for those who are joining for the first time through friends or friends, friends, uh, do check, check back with them on the links. Links will be different every week because of the Zoom. Yeah, and I try to keep it short within half an hour because uh, I got time limit because this Zoom account is free as well. So yeah. If no question, uh, I would like to actually sum it up for the day. If y'all um, uh, if y'all have any questions after this webinar, you know, um, do drop me a message or PM me on my Instagram, or y'all can ask through the Telegram group. At the same time, do like, subscribe my YouTube. Thank you. Yeah. Bottom line, start on something. Don't leave the money in the bank with low. Ah yes. So do something about your money because the current interest rate for banks is pretty low. It's lesser than 1%. So yes, cost the given cyber rate is below 1% at this point of time. So bank interest will, will not be higher than that 1%. That's a good indicator. Yes, sir. So without ado, I would like to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you guys next week as well. Then we can uh, discuss further regards to bond investing itself.